Okay, do not panic. You're safe. This is a good place to be. You're fine. We understand it's difficult. Everything's going to be okay. It's all right, trust us. Look, you've got your Hellboy the board game Kickstarter edition box, and it's massive. But that's all right, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to take you through it. Yeah, yeah, we've got some tea. I recommend pause the video, go get a cuppa, or a coffee, or, you know, whatever you want. Get some biscuits, get some smooth jazz on in the background. We could put some smooth jazz on in the background here if we want to. Um, and we're going to hold your hand every step of the way. Okay, it's cool. So you're here. You're good? You're feeling okay, yeah? You got your tea? Good. Important step. Yeah. It's Self-care is really important. You yeah. Know, look after yourself, make sure you're right. Because you don't want to go into this and not be ready for it. What you've got is a really big box of really cool stuff. And we're going to help you break it down and figure out where to start. Now, the first place to start is to get yourself a copy of this. This is the Hellboy the Board Game Wave 1 Breakdown. This is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. T tell them what I'll find in here. You'll find a breakdown of every single model, component, card, and everything else that I've forgotten to mention of the big box. Yeah. All laid out per core game, expansion, every set that's going to be in there. Yeah. You're going to find all of that detailed on the download, which I'm sure we're going to include in the link. Yeah, I don't know if you can still put little download boxes in videos, but if so, we should. Yeah. But either way, check the description, you'll find it there. Yeah. So, in essence, what you've got in that whopping great box of fun is four separate things. You've got the Hellboy core game, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of the equivalent-ish, I'll explain that in a minute, of what will be going onto the shelf in retail stores. You've then got two expansions, like the Conqueror Worm and the BPRD Archives. And finally, you've got all the cool extras that were included in the Kickstarter, but currently aren't planned to go to retail anytime soon. Now, that may seem like a lot, but it's okay. We're going to tell you how to go through each step one by one. Drink your tea. It might still be Take too hot. Breath. If it's too hot, don't drink it. We're going to sort that's, this out. That's slightly too hot. Um, so, first thing you want to do is get... All of your punch boards, yep, get everything kind of gathered together and then divide it into the different expansions because this has been printed so that it's easily break downable. That is a word uh, for retail, it means that you can do the same thing now. So you can kind of get look at your big list mm -hmm. and you can it tells you how many punch boards, how many card punch boards where you punch the tokens out of are in each, each thing, stack them up. And kind of go, right, this is my core game pile. This is my Conqueror Worm pile, pile. My BPRD archives file. And then everything else. And then all the other awesome uh, In a bucket, if you like. Don't put it in a bucket. But you've got so much extra stuff there. But once you've done that, important step. Drink your tea. Drink your tea. And then forget that you own everything beyond the core game. Just for the start, don't worry, we will yeah. come back to it. And of course, feel free to ignore us. Do whatever you like. This is just kind of our recommended way of approaching this mm -hmm. for an easy, nice time. So forget that you own anything beyond the core set. Mm -hmm. I might just add a little extra recommendation at this point, though, which is once you've got it sorted into your piles and all your punch boards, you might want to just take everything off of all your punch boards and bag those up into their separate piles. Yeah. That will mean that you can actually close the box properly, which means that just one extra thing has been achieved while you've been unpacking your box. That's good advice. Um, so, yeah, so once you've got your core game, uh, look for the booklet that says read this first. That's your tutorial. That will tell you... Uh, how to play through the first few turns of your first game. Uh, it's it's kind of intended as a solo experience. You can do it with a second person. You can do it with a full group of up to four people if you want to. You'll have to fudge it slightly. But basically it's designed for the person who's going to be reading and learning the rules. We all know, if you're watching this, it's probably you, the person who there's gets always, the game. There's always a person who reads the rule book and tells everyone else how it's played. I didn't not always. Sometimes you. <laughs> but yeah, the person who, who, who reads the rules knows how it goes and they're going to teach everyone else. The tutorial is aimed at them. So presumably you read it, play through it, 
and then when you come to play the game with your friends, you'll know what's mm -hmm. going on. So play through the tutorial. That will take you halfway through the first case file, which is called Eviction Notice. And if you want, you can continue playing from that point onwards, or stop there, and then play it properly when the time is right. The case files, incidentally, you'll have uh, some, uh, around 10, I think, uh, case file packs, little seal packs of cards with case files in the kind of manila colored mm. typewritten text on the front. Don't open those yet. They will do that. They do say on them, uh, you know, don't open them. Uh, but yeah, don't open them until you're ready. And don't open them until you come to play each one. The idea is they're sealed. Yeah. And each one of the, the core game will have a stack of six case files. Yeah, there's six of the core game. And then, and then two, two in Conqueror Worm. Conqueror Worm. And then the rest of Well, BPR, the archives uh, and the Kickstarter exclusives are a little bit different because the BPRD archives contains the case file constructor deck. Uh, Which we'll come on to in a bit. Yeah, totally. So anyway, so you've, you've, you've played through your first case file. At this point, just carry and join the core game. Play through the remaining five case files. There's no order. You can play them in any order you like. Um, they do have little recommendations. They say things like easy, medium and hard. Yeah, yeah. Have a look at Long how... And short. Yeah, what kind of game you want to play and, and play the one that seems most appropriate. Mm. Um, also, if you like, have a look at our FAQ and errata document. There's only, I believe, uh, one serious errata for one of the case files in there. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is just kind of clarifications to questions people have asked us. Have a read of that. It might make things clearer for you. Um, also check out our other video we did on uh, target priority and how that yeah. works. But yeah, play through that, get your head around the game, and once you're comfortable with the core game, you don't have to play through all six case files necessarily, once you're comfortable and you want to move on to something else, move on to your first expansion, which should be... The Conqueror Worm. It's the, it's the simplest one to add on to the core game in yep. the first instance. Um, it also adds in two new agents. Yep. Um, which you can choose to play or not. You can just stick with your core game. Yeah, in, in essence, you, you get uh, Lobster Johnson and Roger the Homunculus. They get thrown into your pool of available agents. Yeah. Similarly, uh, it'll add some new requisition cards. You shuffle those in with the rest of your requisition cards. Yeah. Add a load of new deck of doom cards. You add it to your core set and so on and so forth. All the different sets have got icons on them. Yeah. All, all the cards which tell you where they come from. I mean, you, you will have used those when you were splitting your sets out into different things. Each so, expansion will have some extra ones for your sort of core deck of doom yeah. for your core requisition and then your deck of doom constructor which will happen at the start of every case file might have some more specific stuff which is also included in your case file that's what the different colored uh deck of doom icons in the corner of the card yeah, yeah different colored and they've also got little symbols little, for the yeah. color blind etruscan symbols if you were wondering mm. they are etruscan so um, uh, so yeah basically that's uh yeah you've got like uh in Conqueror Worm, you've got effectively two new case files and a bunch of new cards to add into your decks. And if you want to take those cards back out of the decks, it's just a case of going through them, finding the ones with the Conqueror Worm icon, and pulling them out. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so then you've got two more case files to play through, and they will use a mixture of the Conqueror Worm components and your core game components. But that's not all. Then, once you're comfortable, you don't have to play through every case file, but once you're comfortable and you're, you're happy with your new expanded core set, which has the Conqueror Worm mixed in, you can then move on to your BPRD archives. Yep. Now this is where things get a bit wacky. Uh, the BPRD archives introduces the case file constructor system. If the main way of playing case files is like a story mode, if it's sort of a video game, the case file constructor is arcade mode. It's, yep. uh, it's a series of randomly generated scenarios which you will generate at the start of each um, play session. You don't have to do it with everyone around the table, again, talking to you, person who's learning the rules or, you know, teaching everyone. If you want to construct your deck with the case file constructed before everyone turns up for the night, all the better, right? Go for it. Um, it means there's less uh, less hassle, less pre-game, you can get straight into things. But the point of that is that lets you remix everything you've already got and adds in a whole load of new stuff. So you've got a load of new uh, bosses, minions. Uh, it introduces a new thing called themes, which are kind mm. of midway between a minion and a boss. Uh and it gives you lots of different ways to use those. Yeah. But remember, you don't have to do it all in one go. You could just add in one of the agents for your Conqueror Worm, then play a case file, and then once you're comfortable going to BPRD, and maybe just make uh, a 
you know, a constructor deck that's yep. got all the original bad guys and bosses that you've already played with. You don't have to add in all the new stuff all at once. Exactly. Think of this big box as a toolkit. There is a lot in there which lets you just kind of play the game you want to play. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we're just giving you the one recommended way of doing it. So once you've gone through the BPRD archives set, and again, you're comfortable with what you've got there, from that point onwards, you can really just go where you like. Because by then, hopefully, if you've followed this, this guide, you will have a really solid knowledge of how the game works, what kind of games you want to play, mm -hmm. what everything does, and you'll have got used to the notion of remixing the game slightly by putting new things in. So in the BPRD archives, sorry, the Kickstarter extras bundle, that's the everything that's left, you have got a load of different things. There's a few new rule cards which explain some new concepts like remixing your games and changing the difficulty. Yeah, so you've got the hardcore decks and the... Um, rookie mode. The rookie mode. For your deck of doom, yeah. And if you just add in those and then play a standard game as normal, then that's yeah. that's all you need to and do. And actually, if earlier on in the process you think the game's too hard or too easy and you want to make a change, I would say this is the one place you can kind of cheat and move ahead. Is You can have a look at the... Rookie mode and uh, hardcore mode, deck of doom card. There's a rules card you'll find, a poker size card, which says uh, it's called changing the game or varying difficulty or something. I should check that. Um, but you will find that card, and in fact, I can check it now, and it will tell you how to make your game more easy or more difficult. Uh, it is called difficulty settings. There we go. I printed it out. That's preparation. See? Um, so, yeah, basically, you with that, you can add in all sorts of new stuff. And the joy of the case file, uh, case file constructed deck is that the game becomes endlessly replayable and mm -hmm. everything you add in adds more stuff. So what you'll find with the Conqueror Worm, when you play the Conqueror Worm expansion, when you look at that, there are a few cards you won't use straight away because those are for the case file constructor. Put those to one side when you're playing the Conqueror Worm, but once you get into the VPRD archives, you can mix those in and it lets you use all the components from the Conqueror Worm expansion in mm -hmm. there later on when... Hellboy in Mexico, when Darkness Calls, when they come out, you'll be able to add components from them into the constructor as well because they will also have cards. And all of the additional Kickstarter stuff either has constructor cards or at least fiend cards which will mix into your games to add into infinite replay. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have a thing called Unexpected Threats which are a card which goes into the Deck of Doom and they let various new enemies jump out at you. Uh, Unexpectedly. You know, yeah. So you could be suddenly getting Krieg after leaping at you from the shadows uh, out of nowhere. It adds a lot of variety. Um, I've just realised that because we have a small trebuchet in the back of the shot, it looks like I'm wearing a tiny hat. <laughs> a tiny, tiny hat. Apologies, by the way, the Needy Cat office is a place full of work and wonder, and we don't always tidy it as much as we should. And also, this is the only wall that doesn't have stuff that we're not allowed to show you. <laughs> yeah, true. So true. that's why you're seeing this one. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of our, our guide to having a fun time and chilling out and just enjoying, enjoying the it. Hellboy Big Box. And also, make, remember, lift with the knees, not the back. It's quite hefty. It is quite hefty. And remember, there are certain rules cards in there and certain models. You don't have to add it all in one go. Things yeah. like the ominous bird. They're just a cool... Sinister extra. birds. Oh, We sinister, changed the name. Sin they were ominous birds. Sinister originally. birds. Sinister birds. Uh, are not a thing you have to include, but they're just the thing that change the way the game plays in a slightly different way and make it a bit different. Yeah. Some case files, you do have to use those. But yes. But it explicitly yeah, states that. Exactly. That the the, the main it. key thing is don't open the box, look at it in horror, and try playing it all at once. You might actually die. Or explode. Please don't do either one of those things. And remember, every time it gets too difficult, go get a cup of tea and then come back to us. Uh, if you have any questions about the game, you can contact us uh, through our website. That's needycatgames.com slash contact. Um, also... If you'd like to know a bit more about how we design games, we're actually currently running, well, preparing to run a three-part series of courses on tabletop game design. If you like Hellboy and you think we know kind of what we're talking about, um, yeah, we're running these in Nottingham uh, on the, let me get this right, the 18th of May, 22nd of June and 20th of July. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a full day event. They feature... A mixture of theory, theory and practice. workshops. Yeah. We'll be encouraging you to bring your prototypes along so that we yeah. can do live playtesting and feedback. And, and if you haven't got one, that's fine, because the first session, we will help you make one. Yeah. 
It's going to be a great day um, for each one of those sessions. Some people are coming along to all three. Some people are just picking and choosing the ones that they yeah. want. So you can check that out at needycatgames.com slash events. That's it. Um, and lastly, if you appreciate us uh, putting together these videos and you appreciate uh, the the time we've put into making sure that we've got an errata and an FAQ and you'd like to say thank you we also have a Patreon yep. um, and we'll also be putting the theory part of all of our um, games design courses onto our Patreon after we've done them so because yeah. all, all this stuff we just do it because we want you to have a good time we don't exactly. pay for these videos or anything we, but, just, we just like making sure everyone's enjoying the game we've written exactly and uh, we want to make sure that you're having the best experience but if you'd like to, uh, to join our Patreon and back us there, that would be really appreciated and as hey, well. Hey, if we get enough backers, we might get better audio equipment and video equipment so we can we can make better noises on videos. Yeah. We are we are currently looking into doing a podcast. It's a, it's a thing we've we've reached a goal. We're going to do a little podcast and talk to some people who work behind the scenes in the games industry, uh, including hopefully some people that have worked on Hellboy. So check that out. Is, is that is that all we've got to talk about? Yes. We've rambled for way longer than anyone needed to know. The content ended several minutes before this point i've nearly finished my tea yes yeah, so have i we better go we should go happy gaming and uh uh insert Take care. hellboy catchphrase here <laughs>